Okay, so I feel like it's replenished. <laughs> We are here at the shop this morning and my car is absolutely full. I went shopping yesterday, I went to four Goodwells and an antique mall and I think I filmed maybe four videos for you guys. So uh, today is kind of a shop day. I am here, I'm going to be photographing things for listing and then I am going to be um, bringing some stuff over to Bedford Street. I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to move into the booth over there. I've sold quite a few things, so I need to fill in the spots. And I think I'll just throw everything in a tote and bring it over there and just walk in with a tote and, and sprinkle the things in my booth. Um, so I've got that to do today. I did make the decision last week that I'm going to be running Tuesday auctions. So up until this point, I would be posting like five items on Monday and then I'd skip two days and I'd put like three items up and so it was just kind of sporadic when I was listing stuff to auction but I've decided going forward that my auction listings are all going to be going live every Tuesday and they're going to be ending on Sunday so, so you guys know like that's the day when my my stuff goes live so you can check back on Tuesdays and um, it's not going to be as crazy and hectic scheduling. Uh, buy it now is so I'm just gonna pump them out whenever. I don't think they're there is much of a, of a big deal because they have a tendency to sit a little bit longer. But anyway, I'm at the shop this morning. I've got to head in. I've got to unload my car. I've got to work. And then we're going to get on with our day. So Shelby has been unloading a lot of stuff on this shelf here. And I've noticed that it does help me kind of realize like, okay, well, this belongs together or this belongs together. Um, I think everything here is the extrav so i really need to get this stuff listed for next tuesday um here we've got a few halloween pieces as of me recording this you have not seen this video yet or this one <laughs> so i really need to get through this stuff i'm kind of contemplating bringing this guy over to uh, bedford today probably gonna put that one in Bedford Street Antiques. I think I only paid like 40 bucks for that. It wasn't very much at all. But I'm going to check it over right now and see if I can find a signature on it. And there's a signature. It's on the base. I have seen this before and I think where I saw this was um, in Adamstown at one of the antique malls. I found a similar light that had shades that were like this. Um... I'm going to have to do a little research and figure out how much I need to put on this. And then I'm going to start spitting out labels. There it is. I'm like, wait a second. Where is the harp for that? There we go. I think the bottom says Stan. Maybe. T. Stan. That's what I'm going with. Or Stowe could be stow. Let's see what I can find. Okay, so I'm collecting some things on the cart that I feel like I can price for over at the antique mall. This one is on my nerves. <laughs> I've tried every form of the letters I see on the bottom of it. And I think why I'm most frustrated is because I know I've seen it before. And I looked at it and I've acknowledged who makes it and I cannot pull it out of my brain and it is driving me absolutely nuts. I specifically remember this finial. That's the clue right there. I remember looking at this finial before. So it's got me very frustrated. I did not pay very much for it. So if worse comes to worse, I'll just put a price on it that I think it's worth and go from there. I think this bad boy is going to go over there as well. I think Tommy has one of these at his shop, and I think he's got his price for like 300 if I recall. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to put on that yet. I have some very tall vases on there. <laughs> They're kind of like all over the place. Um, I kind of went crazy on the, the vases. Yes, I did. And you see that beautiful thing over there? Mm, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. That is not going. This I think I'm going to use at my own house. I don't know if you guys saw me grab that at Springfield yet. I think that might go on my porch for this season. And then maybe I'll turn it around and uh, get rid of it. I'm not quite sure yet. What do we have down here? That was stuff we got on the way home. This, in my video, I suspected that it was Blanco, but Peter let me know that this is actually Tierra. Um, I think I'm going to put this over in the booth. 
This looks like Goodwill. Pretty sure this is Goodwill stuff. Decisions, decisions. I forget how much I paid for these. I feel like those would be better sold on eBay so then I can actually track them for my sold videos. Because a lot of the times when I put things over in the antique mall, I can't necessarily give you a sold price because I can't really track them. Um, I'm not going to put any fairy lights over there. Alright, I'm going to keep looking. Well, I can always count on Peter for my glass ID. <laughs> I got so frustrated I sent it to him. And this is what he came back with. So the artist is Tom Stoner. And he actually suggested it was Stoner, but that is the correct spelling because I tried looking up the regular one and it was, it was not S-T-O-N-E-R, I can tell you that. So that's exciting. So somebody has it listed for $325. Um, I'm going to be putting it in the mall. And I think that I only spent $40 on it, plus the auction premium, which is 15%. Cookie jars. I told you guys I bought a bunch of cookie jars at one of the previous auctions before we pulled everything out um, of Carlisle. And so I have a lot of larger items. The problem I'm going to have when I get over there is that we don't have very high shelving. Our shelves are kind of narrow, so the larger items like the cookie jars have to sit on top of the shelves and it kind of, it, it, there's not very much room for the tall items, so. I'll make it work. I just cleaned this bad boy off. I'm like, why is it doing that? I've got it set up. <laughs> there we go. So there's a whole bunch of dirt collected down in the little feet. Got that all cleaned up. I think this is going to go over into Bedford. Um, this is not something that I really want to entertain the idea of shipping because it's so large and it really freaks me out. But it looks gorgeous now that it's been cleaned. My suspicion is that this is Czech glass. I don't think this is Murano, um, but in any case, whether it's Czech or Murano, it is a really nice piece of glass. Drain the water out of there. I'm gonna dry it off. Now I have to find my keys. Oh, there they are. So here is the Ricochet app. You guys have seen me do this before, but now instead of um, having it hooked up to the mall, I have it hooked up to my phone. So I'm really not sure how um, this is gonna work. I've never actually put anything into this system yet. But I'm assuming we go to products and then new item. And then we start loading stuff in. That seems like how you do it. And then we can go over to the computer over here and fire off all the labels, get them stuck on this stuff, and then drive it on over to Bedford the ideal situation okay um so i'm going to price this stuff and we'll go from there there are a ton of vases and they seem to sell between 150 and 200 dollars here are a few larger 14 inch which if i had to guess i would say this is at least 14 inches um, those ones sold for 295 to 260 295 being uh 2020 too. I realize you, can't, you guys can't even see what I'm looking at. Um, so 2022. Uh, now Worth Point, I've talked about it before. It's um, a paid paid subscription. Okay, so this seems to be working well. I've put this green studio pottery vessel in here. There we go. Eighteen dollars. I listed that one for eighteen. Let's see if it says no. Um, I was able to add a note that it's been repaired and the lid is missing. I thought that was important. I did this one for 42. Um, I did this one for 42. This is Indiana Tierra glass. I think I mentioned that. Um, and this one for 115, just because of its size. It's a very large uh, bowl. This one for 345. And I still have to do this guy and this. I'm putting this one in the system for $245. We'll hit the save. It's going to be fun trying to print these labels. I feel like I need to mosey around here and find some smaller items. Because like I mentioned, the shelves are quite small. So I think I'm going to go in the back and look on those shelves. Here we are. Let's see what we've got back here. Maybe put these salt and pepper shakers over there. Those are Goodwill. 
This is an extra in an auction lot. Um, let's see here. <laughs> All these little mice. I don't know, those make me nervous because I can't really put a price tag on them, so I'd have to put them in a Ziploc or like a little um, cellophane bag and I'd be, I'd be afraid they'd get ruined. Go put this Hershey Kiss thing over there. What is in here? Oh, I think this is the, um, the parrot stuff, right? Yeah, that's the parrot stuff. I should leave that box open so I see it and I list it because I know quite a few of you were interested in that. Here's all my fall stuff that I have been slowly listing. There's a bunch of knickknacks in the back. Those were from baggies that I broke open and took the stuff that I liked out of them. Okay, well, my sister called me um, to see if I could get coffee on Friday, and I'm actually I'm doing the meet and greet on Friday, so that wasn't going to work. But while I was on the phone with her, I was pulling stuff off the shelves. And this is kind of what I ended up with. Um, I have these two vases that are absolutely perfect for Halloween. This one is satin glass, and this one is matte pottery. I actually bought it thinking that it was uh, a black satin glass. It's not. It's pottery. Here are a few other things I had on the shelf that I just, I've had too long and haven't gotten around to listing, including this awesome gnome platter. <laughs> He's pushing a wheelbarrow full of flowers. I mean, it's a little past the season, but I thought that would be nice to have over there. Tonala tumbler or vase. One of the boxes. This butter dish. I think I have that at like eight bucks. You know, so this was just like some filler stuff that I didn't really put a top dollar price on. I think the pair of these I put 12 on. I think it's good to have some lower end items in the booth as well for people who are just coming through and doing a little shopping. So clearly there's still a lot more on the shelf, but I feel like these are items I probably need to list. Although this guy back here has been hanging out for a hot minute <laughs> playing his flute. I might stick a price on him. I think he was an auction extra. So I have a nice collection of things here. I'm not quite sure how much room I have over there. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna go try to get these labels to print. I got it to work. One thing that was bothering me though is that I couldn't get the little, um, little code to show up in the corner. I played with it probably for about 15 minutes and it just wasn't happening and I figured I'll just write it on there. Easy solution. So I added my vendor code to all of these labels. And I'm gonna come over here and start slapping them on and then load this stuff into boxes and go from there. So I decided to price these large chargers that I just had hanging around. I think I paid $20 a piece for these at the thrift store at Goodwill. Um, but I felt like I could still make money on them. They're very large Italian chargers, but they can also be hung on the wall. So I priced those at $78 each. I felt like that was fair. Um, and then $24 on this wooden telephone. Um, now, all of the stuff that I am pricing for the Antique Mall, we're not offering it um, on eBay right now. But if it doesn't sell from there, I may end up bringing it back over and sticking it up on eBay. So I know we usually get a lot of messages after I do a video like this of people who want to purchase the stuff from our booth, but we just can't, we can't offer that right now. Um, but we've just got too much going on. All right, so Andrew sold one of his um, artworks over at Bedford. And so I was digging through the pile for another artwork uh, that we could put in its place. And this is just about the right size. So I think I'm going to put this over there and price it. I absolutely love this. I don't remember where it came from, but um, probably auction. I'm not sure if it was an auction extra or if I had my eye on this. I feel like this is something I would definitely have my eye on. So the good thing about it is I can just roll it up like this to get it over there and it's, it's not as as cumbersome as a framed artwork so we're gonna roll that up and I gotta figure out a price for that I'm also sending little miss Cordy over there um, I think I put $78 on her I didn't go crazy I know that Yvonne found those wall pockets by Cordy and they were worth like hundreds of dollars but I don't know necessarily what the lamps would be worth so I only paid seven bucks for her, 78 seems reasonable to me. 
All right, well, I grabbed this coffee table out of the shop. I didn't put a price on or anything on it. It's got a wonky leg, but I think it's gonna do the trick for the center of the booth, um, mostly because I definitely did not get the bookcase in here. We're gonna make do. Well, after getting everything up priced this morning, I'm finally over at Bedford Street Antiques. So I'm gonna go get a cart, and I'm gonna wheel it out here, and I'm gonna bring everything in, and we'll go from there. So they have completely redone the front in a Halloween theme, and I think this is the best one. Really? This is incredible. Wow. He was the biggest Vincent Price collector in the United States. Really? He had a whole room dedicated to Vincent Price and sent it all to the museum. Wow. I love this guy in the back. Sold. Oh, man. That is incredible. Okay, so there were no carts available. I'm literally bringing in box by box. I'm sure they have one somewhere, but I just figured I'd do it this way. Um, so like I was saying back at the shop, I don't really have any tall shelves. So finding space for this and those two small glass vases is going to be difficult. I did find a space for the lamp, though. I think it looks pretty nice there. Um, I'm thinking I can move this puppy dog over. He's plastic. And then put this back here, maybe. That one has a really heavy base, so I'm not too worried about it tipping over. This one, on the other hand, is kind of wobbly. I have two more totes. I have that one and this banana box. So two more trips. All right, well, that was my last trip. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I do still have that coffee table, but I just, I'm not here for it. It's four trips. I feel like I got my steps in for the day. Okay. So this is the last box, and I put a lot of the smalls in here. And also that really large art glass. So these are going to be easy enough because I'm just going to put these on the shelves. Like, look. <laughs> I love the way that the batik looks on the wall. I kind of grouped the glass together. I have a lot of amber there, but I do have this green swung glass over here. I'm debating whether I need to move the glass together or if the flow of the glass um, causes your eye to move. The Pepsi Cola little wagon is just kind of in the middle of everything, but I don't know where else to put it. I feel like I'm kind of stuck with it. All right, so I moved this down here. I moved it off of here because I really do want to showcase the pattern on this. And if I have too much stuff piled up here, I can't really see it. I'm surprised this is still here. 250. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you.